Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com and we have efficient power conversion in the lab. There's four GAN fits on there. Can you see them? They're huge. <laughs> There's two buck converters. They're working in parallel, 180 degrees out of phase. So it's called a two phase buck converter, okay? What that does, I did a video talking about the benefits of that. So I'll put the links down below and also about how to probe you know, ZMI noise rail, and, you know, just talking about the burst mode control, showing how maybe that's not EMI friendly, okay? So this thing puts out 180 watts, okay? And it will work from 20 to 36 volts input, and it has 12, 16, or 20 volt selectable output. It's an eval card, so there's different modes of operation you can put it in. You can put it in the parallel mode, you can take it out, so it has two separate outputs, okay? Now this board, even though it's small, it could be a lot smaller. It's got these big banana jacks for test, you know, input power and, and three for output power. And then it has connections for your test probes and all these jumpers for uh, evaluating different modes of operation. And so really, I'll bet you this could be shrunk by maybe not quite half unless you really squeeze things together but at least two thirds in length and two thirds in width. Yeah, so I'd say it can be shrunk by about two by two inches, something like that, 180 watts. And there's not very many components on the back. There's a big polymer capacitor and a whole bunch of little small caps, but pretty small circuit, guys. There's all these test connectors on the edge where you can grab onto them and probe different things. Okay, so there's lots of stuff going on, on this board. So the control chip, does the magic here with the GAN fits. Those two combine the LTC 7890, it's analog devices, an LT chip they put on this thing, has GAN, it can drive GAN fits directly. So that's that's awesome. So between that and the, and the little teeny GAN fits, makes the circuit very efficient, very low noise, and very small, okay? I mean, two-phase uh, buck converter makes the noise lower, but also the quick switching you can you don't have to have as much dead time There's some benefits and all that stuff. All right, so guys What I want to do is bring you over here and I want to show you three modes of operation There's the burst mode which I showed in the last video and I showed how maybe it's not too EMI friendly I showed loads from one amps to five amps and no load Okay, and this in this video I want to show the burst mode and I want to show the constant conduction mode, the CCM, okay? And then I wanna show the uh, pulse skipping mode. There's a pulse skipping mode, which is generally what I've used throughout the years. Just let the thing go into pulse skipping and you know work that way. CCM, constant conduction mode, that's where that output inductor always has current flowing in it. Uh, otherwise, it'll charge up and discharge, and then it goes dry, what I call it, until the next cycle comes along. And then it has to, kind of get the car moving again. Once you got rolling, then let go, it stops, you wait and do it again. Constant conduction mode, you keep that car go going. You know, even if it's real slow, you just keep it going, okay? So keep that inductor filled up, uh, even if it's just a little bit. So we're gonna test those three modes, see which one is the quietest. Looking at the spectrum with this nice Unity scope, 500 meg scope, Okay, and we'll look at the output ripple at the same time. Okay, so let's jump over here and look at some uh, measurements. Hey, by the way, before we do that, I want to give a shout out to Holton Audio 623 for hitting that super thank you button down below, and Danny as well hitting that super thank you. Appreciate it, you guys. See, two thumbs up. And then I also want to say congratulations to James Bowen for winning that soldering station. All right, guys, so I want to announce James Bowen wins his soldering station, okay? Uh, he actually, hopefully he has his by now. The company was nice enough to agree to send to someone I select a winner of uh, a free station and mail it to him, so I wouldn't have to pay that shipping. <laughs> guys, I was, I was going broke just shipping out free products. I mean... I was spending hundreds of dollars a month. I did that a couple months on row. My wife's like, ah, oh, you gotta stop that. We're going broke. <laughs> so she's right. So uh, so I asked the vendors if they would just ship it directly. And some of these vendors agree. So that's awesome. 
Um, that one was Tool R, T O O L O U R. So thank you, Tool R, for sending that out to James Bond. Now, the next giveaway is this one, the Novus Big, okay? Magnetic Helping Hands. I explained how to win that in the in that video where I kind of box opened, kind of showed how that thing works. So right now I've got a few people that have put their names in and I'm gonna wait until this weekend and I'm gonna select somebody, okay? I'll announce that uh, this weekend, okay? All right, let's get back to the video. Okay guys, this is the EPC board, uh, the four GAN FETs, the two inductors for the two-phase buck converter, all right? I've done some other videos talking about that. You might want to go watch uh, the ones I'm probing on is EMI Noise Real, where I talk more in detail, okay? Show whiteboard and how buck converters work. Okay, here's the differential probes coming in. That's what we're looking at here in this video. I have a current probe, but they it give us similar results as a differential probe, so I'm gonna just use a differential. So here's the scope set up. The differential input, channel one, that's what we're gonna be looking at, okay? Okay, channel three is the current probe, okay? And then channels two and four are the switching nodes. And that's those two guys right there. So we're gonna be focusing on channel one here with the FFT, okay? And then if follow the leads up, then this is the active load we're gonna use, the IT, the ITEC, 8512A. Then if we follow the input power, because we're here, the power supply right here, we're going to be using this matrix power supply, okay? The WPS300S-150-5, that's mouthful. All right, let's take a look at the waveforms. I'm going to change this jumper right here, which allows me to go from burst mode to pulse skipping to uh, CCM, which is constant conduction mode, okay? I got a video on that too. All right, guys, this is burst mode. Uh, marker number one is minus 48 at 20 kilohertz. Two is minus 57 at 41 kilohertz. So about 20 kilohertz separate separation between these harmonics, okay? So you can see how high they are. Here's 100 dB, and most of this bulk stuff is between 80 and 100 with these spikes going up above, okay? The red one is the continuous um, sweep. The red one is the continuous sweep, and the blue one is average, four cycles, okay? So it's a little bit cleaner and averaging. So, okay, now there's that. That's one amp load, all right? So it's about 12.9 watts out. Okay, let's go to five amps load. Okay, five amps load. The ripple cleans up. There's no more no more burst. And now all the noise is at the slow frequency stuff. Minus 67, 66. So it's much lower. And look, 100 dB all the way out to about here. Then it goes up to about 80 dB right here with a few little spikes in that range, okay? But that burst mode, totally cleaned up. So we had spike, narrow band energy, plus we had the overall waveform going up, which is wideband frequency noise. So burst mode, not so much a friend of EMI. All right, guys, this is skip mode. Look how clean, 100 dB. It almost looks like the five amp from before, right? Let's zoom in on this stuff, okay? Well, here, let me freeze that so you can see it. So see, it's just kind of like skipping pulses. There's a narrow and a wide. So it's just pulse skipping. It's a little bit more hectic, a little more random, but overall it's averaged out and it barely increased if anything, right? Let's run that again. Okay, now we're gonna go to five amps. Did you see a change? The spectrum looks pretty close to the same, right? Things might be changing over here a little bit, maybe. Looks kind of similar, but overall it looks pretty good. So skip mode, maybe that's EMI friendly mode. That's what I found in the past. 
Okay, now here we are with one amp. This is continuous conduction mode, CCM. Look, pretty clean, huh? Even this looks less erratic. So 100 dB, not a ton different than pulse skipping, but maybe the best. Okay, here, let me zoom in on this. Freeze it. Look, they're all even uh, duty cycles. Pretty interesting, right? Okay, let's get some more again. And we'll go to 5 amps. What do you think? Might be one spike there that's taller, maybe. But down around here, pretty low, right? It's looking pretty good at 100, up to 100 kilohertz. Maybe we should go out to 100 meg just to make sure, or even 10 meg. Let's go 10 meg. All right, so now we were at 100 kilohertz way down here, but now look, we're seeing some harmonics here, and they're coming out to about 4 meg and minus 80 dB. So you see minus 67, minus 68. So right around that range, the highest ones, okay? So here's minus 60, so they're... Underneath that, a lot of spikes right around minus 80, and then some down around minus 90. So, okay, that's five amps. That's continuous conduction mode, CCM. Let's go to one amp. Not a lot changed, right? Maybe some of the spikes have dropped, maybe a little bit less energy. Maybe a little bit less energy. Spikes have dropped a little bit. Okay, let's try pulse skipping. All right, we're pulse skipping, and we're at one amp where we left off with the with the CCM, and similar kind of waveform, right? These might be a little bit better behaved, I think. Minus 69, minus 68. So yeah, I think pulse skipping, the one where it doesn't take anything fancy, might be actually the best. Here, let's uh, go to five amp. Did you see anything change? That's 5 amp. All right, guys. So this is burst mode, obviously. And look at that. About, looks kind of similar, actually, right? So in the high frequencies, it looks kind of similar. Most of this stuff is that 20 kilohertz stuff way down in here. A little bit more energy here, maybe. There is a nice little spike there. Minus 48, so that's, that's yeah, minus 56, the next one. So they're, the, the first one and two spikes are a little bit worse, and actually they're down the low frequency, 16 kilohertz, which we know, and then 40 kilohertz, which is the second harmonic. And, yeah, so we're still getting the worst harmonics up here in the pulse skip in the low frequency. Number four is minus 69 or whatever, so... Okay, so now let's go to five. Okay, so five amps, they all look pretty much the same because all the modes of operation should be back to normal. So, and so the five amp condition on each one should, should look the same because that special mode of operation for light load should be gone. Okay, I'm gonna go one amp again. I wanna show you something though. Okay, here, I wanna show you something. All right, guys, for some reason, when I put my hand up here, it doesn't make the screen shutter. So, okay, we're at 12.88. So roughly, you know, 12.9 watts, right? Okay, this is in the burst mode. So 12.88. And that's with the one amp load. Okay, so this is pulse skipping, 13.5. So essentially what that means is we're kind of overfilling that cup of water, that regulation thing. So we're giving a little bit more energy than we have to. But for EMI, it's better. So 12.88 versus 13.52. Okay, now let's try the next one. Okay, guys, and this is a CCM mode, the constant conduction mode. So 13.5, now we went up to 13.955, so 13.96. So even a little bit more energy in this mode, right? So this is the least conservative and as far as EMI goes, I don't know if there's any better than the pulse skipping. Maybe if we look at 
some really good details, maybe we'd see a benefit, but it is the highest energy uh, user at light load. 63.48 at 5 amps and CCM. All right, a 5 amp load and pulse skipping mode, we're at 63.7 watts. Okay, and burst mode, 63.66, okay? So that's with the 5 amp load. Now, the 5 amp load, they all should be the same because we should, should be out of that um, operation, that special mode. But then again, maybe we're right on the edge of it, okay? All right, guys, so what do you think? It's pretty cool to see the three modes of operation side by side, right? It's pretty neat. And also to see not only the noise, but how much power it uses and the benefits. You know, it's nice to see that the pulse skipping works well in the noise compartment. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, the CCM, maybe it's more predictable. Uh, maybe there's some other benefits I haven't thought of right now. Uh, it looks more predictable. Uh, use a little bit more power. But as far as noise, I'd have to zoom in at certain frequency spectrums, like look at that uh, one megahertz and below, you know, zoom into that. At 10 megahertz, it looked like it was mostly down the lower frequencies. I like to zoom in maybe between 100K and one meg, something like that, and see what I see. So, um, yeah. Anyway, what do you guys think? What's your experience been with those three modes of operation? Hey, if you like these videos, give it a thumbs up. Appreciate it. That's a free way to support the channel. It's funny because these design videos or these analysis or test videos on power supplies, uh, they don't do that great. So sometimes they do. A lot of times they don't. So uh, for you guys that like them, really hit that like button. Give it the love. Uh, subscribe. Do those things to show me that, you know, People want to see these kind of videos. I want to do them because I'm a power supply guy. So I want to put out these videos and efficient power conversion. Thanks for sending this out to me. LT, the LTC7890, nice chip. Did a good job on that. All right, let me know what else you guys would like to see on this. If there's something else you'd like to see on this board. I've been beating the snot out of this. Power, turning on and off, different power loads. Uh, with active load. Active loads are just pulling current. They don't care what the voltage is. They just want to pull current. So it's a brutal way to test a power supply. Okay. Now, if I really wanted to look at just noise, I'd probably run it into a resistive load instead of the active load. But the active load, I'm comparing side by side. So it's fair. Okay. But if I want to really evaluate just what the board is doing by itself, I'd probably go into resistive load. Anyway, there you go, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, hope you like these kind of videos. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.